Hey, it's Joe Lyons, and uh, in this video I'm demonstrating using the Zillow API. Zillow is a uh, service where you can uh, look at home values and real estate properties and stuff. So let me uh, pull up here. This is the, the overall um, documentation for their API. Uh, you can, it's free, right? They have certain conditions you can use it. Let's see. Um, let's see what what is it if we look at their website. So it gives you an idea of the home prices. This is, is this around where I live? Yeah. So here is uh, Capel, and let's see, Sandy Lake. All right. So I'm I live up here. I don't. Kind of funny that they aren't included. Here we go. And that's my. Oh, look, it has a little heart. So that's my house right there. Um, wave, everyone, wave. Anyway, uh, so you can you can. Of course, use your website to this, but then getting the data out of it is, of course, if you're doing web scraping, it's it's a bit of a pain, right? Let me click on it here. Um, you'd have to do grab certain things, but what if you just wanted the data, right? So that's what these uh, videos on on the API is. Here, um, you have your endpoint. This is my endpoint where I'm getting deep search results. They have uh, these four that I recall. In this example, I'm just doing the get deep search results, and then. Um, that's the endpoint, and then I'm going to build my query string where I pass it a key value pair. So the address is this is my address, the city state. Oh, I'm adding in the this is the city and state, um, and then my this is how you pass your authentication. So this is my ID, and I have a token value which I'm reading in here, and I'm just this is how I keep it secret so I don't have to go reset it because I'll make this code available, but you'll have to go get your own token. Um, and then you can put it in the, your script, or you can do it the way I'm doing it, reading it from any file. Um, that way, when by the way, when you share it, you don't have to worry about, gee, did I leave my, my token in there, and now it's compromised? So, um, oh, this is the actual API call to Zillow. And what we first do is we create a column object, um, a pointer to it, and then we're going to open, and here I'm concatenating the endpoint and the query string. Right, and so this is it's gonna it's gonna slap on um, a pretty looking query string that'll begin with a question mark, and then ampersands can cut in the key value pairs. And um, you know what? Here, let me show this first. So this is how I get. Um, I'm gonna use my site output function. <coughs> So I'm going to save this, reload it, and when I run it, you're going to see this is going to be, it looks like XML that comes back. So this is the XML that gets returned, right? Which, um, it was the same data as what you just saw, it's just not pretty to look at, right? It's not, the structure isn't there. Um, and so what this, uh, this SXML pretty function takes that response text, and then it, um, it makes it, it, it adds a structure to it. Um, this is the different spaces. I can, I can also, I can throw in a, I think that'll interpret as a tab. Now I'm going to rerun this, and now when I run it, now it structures, and these are going to be tabs, um, the indentions, see how it jumps? These are tab indentions instead of, maybe before I had three or four spaces, right? So it just depends on how, you know, if I just wanted one space, it wouldn't look nearly as, as deep, right? A little harder to pick out, but if I think three spaces is a good, nice, good value that you can see the structure, and yet it doesn't go off the page. Um, and so here I'm getting the uh, details. Also in here, see this. Um, this is the ID in Zillow for my home, and then I can later use that. I can get comps or comparable prices uh, based off of that ID. And so this is what I'll say. You'd first do an API call to get this ID based off an address, and then you take that ID and you use that in follow-up calls. And uh, that's basically it. Just wanted to show. Let's let's. Uh, this is this is a home I, I lived in California where I grew up. And uh, I was looking at the the cost. I wish I had saved the other one, but um, the uh, the size of this is much smaller um, as far as the uh, uh, somewhere in here finished square feet. Wow, wow! Not even fourteen hundred. And my house here in Texas is uh, I think thirty two hundred. And yet the uh, the range is between six hundred seventy thousand to upper at seven hundred seventy two thousand dollars. Right, so let's say it's at a uh, seven hundred thousand, seven twenty-five, um, for roughly half the size of a, a house. Right, um, your wow, was it really built in nineteen fifty? I didn't realize it. Um, Thirteen ninety-eight. Let me let me 
let me do my little screen clipping here and let me go back all I'm doing is commenting out I'm gonna rerun it and let's let's compare I'm just curious it shows you the cost difference of California to, to Texas overall um, this is the Phipps County that's a, a geo stuff and uh, your, your government things tax assessment Four bathrooms, yeah. Finished square feet, 3302, okay. Um, and lot size, what was the lot size here? We had a decent backyard there. Lot size, 7600, yeah, so see that the the lot size is about the same, but finished square feet, 1398 um, versus 3302. Um, one bathroom, actually it had two, we, we added one. But um, it's just fun to play with, right? Uh, but that, that cost, man. Wow, huge! Almost double the price for half the size. What a what a bargain! Um, I got I love Texas. So uh, that's connecting to the Zillow API. And uh, sorry for uh, getting a little off topic, but um, pretty cool stuff. Like I said, there's there's four I think different. There's the. Do I still have the? Uh, this one open. So let's see if we can. You know what? Back in here, I probably have. Yeah, this is the API overview. Let's go there. And here, um, so there's the, the Z estimate, get search results, charts, and get comps. And so here in the get comps, I recall this ID. So the web services, so the web services, is, I'm trying to remember if that was, oh, this is the zip property ID. This is the one I was thinking. This is the ID. So when you pass it, your the ID of your home, it will give you a bunch of comps for it, um, for comparable homes around there that are similar size, um, and, and so you get a better idea, not just of what Zillow thinks your house is worth, but other ones around you. So uh, that's it. That was fun. Thanks.